first to face the dragons is New York-born Melissa Snover. When you make a new product, it's a little bit like having a baby. Uh, you are in a lab developing it for a while, and then you show it to the world. But fingers crossed, the dragons will like it and will be walking out with a smile. Melissa has come up with an innovative way for the nation's candy lovers to get their fix. And luckily for some, her business also has a healthier side. That is not me, is it? Like, I've gained a few pounds. Hello. I'm Melissa Snover, the head magician and founder of the Magic Candy Factory. Today, I'm looking for an investment of 80,000 pounds in exchange for 2% of my business. The Magic Candy Factory is the world's first and only 3D food printer to be certified and safe for live, public, and commercial use. People can write words, make 3D shapes, or even upload photographs to create their very own sweet selfie. I made a few of you guys up here. Magic Candy Factory launched its first printers into the market in 2016 in April. And since then, we've deployed over 100 machines in different retail, travel, and entertainment venues across the globe. But in addition to that, we're launching a new concept in personalized supplements. So people will go online and they'll be able to choose seven active ingredients from 27 different options across minerals, vitamins, probiotics, and then we will 3D print them their customized vitamins and send them in the post with less inconvenience, less cost, and less waste. The future of wellness is 3D. I hope you'll agree. And I made you some um, examples, and I can show you here. Customized candy, as well as personalized vitamin supplements, are the offerings from Melissa Snover. She's looking for £80,000 in return for a 2% share in her 3D printing business. If I kiss the frog, I might get a You prince. might. You never Let know. You never know. A fairy tale taste test. Actually, it's very nice. But Tuka Suleiman wants to go back to the very beginning of the story. Melissa. Yes. How did you start with all this? So I started making candy about seven, eight years ago because I'm a vegetarian and I couldn't find gummy candy without gelatin that tasted good. And so I came up with my first uh, consumer brand, Goody Good Stuff. I sold Goody Good Stuff about two and a half years ago to a large conglomerate. And at the end of that, uh, one of my biggest frustrations was that you couldn't make customized products in a normal factory. So the Magic Candy Factory was my vision to allow the consumer to create their own product. And how much did you sell your company for? Unfortunately, it's undisclosed. Um, I'm not allowed to say what we sold it for. Was it in the millions? Yes. And where would I find this in the UK? We actually leased the printers to a retail outlet for a period of time. So uh, it was in stores nationwide for Christmas. Fine. The other machine you've got there is the vitamin machine. Yes. So I want some vitamins. I go on your website and I say, I'm short of iron, I'm short of this. It'll be calculated. Bing, it'll say, you need X, Y, and Z, and we'll put you on a year's subscription. Yeah, that's correct. And then we will send them in the post. There'll be lots of options. So one month will be one price, three months will be cheaper, a 12-month subscription will be less. Impressive. Thank you. Two potential sources of revenue for Melissa, who's made a good first impression on the dragons. Now, Jenny Campbell wants to find out exactly what's brought her to the den. You're a successful businesswoman. Thank you. You had a business and you sold it for many millions. So I'm intrigued, first of all, as to what you want a mere £80,000 for. Why do you need a want a dragon? So what I really want from this experience and the reason I wanted to come on was that I'm about to go into two markets that are not my specialty, so vitamins and supplements and direct-to-consumer, totally digital online business. And so I really would like to have the expertise of someone who has more in those areas. Okay, so it's more about the building blocks for your business, the vitamins business. That's exactly right, yeah. Funny that. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Melissa. Hi, how are you? Very well, thanks. Um, vitamins has been my business for many, many years. 
And just going with your vitamin uh, machine at the moment, how long does it take to produce a pack? Right now, we're currently testing at five minutes for a one month supply. It is still a prototype, and we do hope to be able to get it down to about three minutes. But for a one month personalized vitamin um, at the moment, that cost price is still netting us about a 50% margin. Wow. In terms of customization, I see things going there. I don't know if it is today, but it definitely is moving towards that direction. Yeah. Praise for Melissa's product from the Vitamin King, who appears to share her vision for the future of supplements. But Tuka Suleiman wants to drill deeper into the mechanics of her business. How much money have you raised to get this off the ground? Um, the original investment that was put in from myself and my other uh, shareholder and other director mm. was around about 800,000. And who, and who are the shareholders? Just myself and my business partner, Bastian Pusin. And, and, and how much do you own the business? 10%. You own 10%? Yes. Oh, and who owns the rest? He does. Is he an active shareholder? No. He's a passive shell. Yes. So what does he do? He has his own candy business based in Germany, which is very old, about 100 years old. He what has a lot of called? responsibility. Catches. Melissa, surely, if he owns 90% of the business, yep. he should have been here. Well, he, he didn't feel like he needed to be here. Day to day, no, I run no, no, the company but, and the entire operation. But, but, I mean, do you have the mandate to negotiate? Yes, yes, I do. The revelation that Melissa only owns a 10% chunk of the business has given the dragon something to chew on. And Peter Jones has spotted something on her candy's packaging which could further sour the mood in the den. So the product here, and you, the guy that owns Catches, is that right? Yeah. This is his branding? Yes, it is, yeah. And are they in the UK? No, they're not in the UK, no. And is this almost like a division of their company then? No, I, I don't see it that way at all. Um, but why we, do you use their brand? It's, their brand's not known here. In the very beginning, uh, we called it Magic Candy Factory on its own, and as it started to grow, we both decided we felt it was a good opportunity to also raise awareness about catches. And at the end of the day... Hang on, hang on, hang on. this is all words. So I'm, I'm going to break this down because I'm good at this. I don't buy it. The reason why I don't buy it is that you've got an investor that isn't here today and owns 90% of the company. And you're putting his brand on a product that he's got nothing to do with, apparently. Well, he does have something to do with it because he made it possible for us to get to market. Where did the so, money come from? Did he personally put the money in or did he use his company vehicle to put the, the money in? The money is in the business through the company. Right. Okay. You're now a division of his global operation. Actually, that's not true, because all of the major decisions that would happen within the company require a unanimous agreement between myself it's and still, him. It's still irrelevant, because he hasn't personally invested. He is the other person named on the shareholders' agreement. It says his name. You're a businesswoman. You know exactly what you're doing here. You are a subsidiary in the UK of his business. I really don't see it that way, but I understand your point, no, but and the I take facts, it on board. The fact, let's go back. The facts are true, though. That's true. Have you got your shareholders agreement here? I do, yeah. One second. So the... Don't worry, I'll find you'll it. You'll find it? Okay, I've seen lots of shareholders agreements. You've seen lots Thank and you. lots of shareholders <laughs> agreements. There we go. Just to be absolutely clear, this is not an agreement between you and Mr Fasine. This is an agreement between you and Katja. That's actually pretty catastrophic as far as I'm concerned. Cat Jess basically own this business and they've incentivized you with 10% to be their manager. I've also invested in the business myself. I know, myself, that's but... not an unusual structure in a private equity type arrangement and that's what we've got here. It's not one I want to sit as a junior partner in. So I'm really sorry, Melissa, I'm out. A blow for the entrepreneur who has lost her first dragon. Melissa's pitch is in danger of imploding. Is Tuka Suleiman sufficiently enthused by the technology to overlook the contentious German connection? I think we are just coming to a new revolution in 3D printing. And just as you thought about vitamins, 
there'll be something else, there'll be more vitamin machines. We're at the beginning. Uh, I think you've done great. Thank you. However, the share structure concerns me. It's just complicated. And I, I've got, I want a simple life at my age. So for that reason, I'm not going to invest, I'm out. Having, having said that you're a successful businesswoman, I'm now going to say, actually, I find you come into the den today on the basis of this proposition very naive. You've sold a business, OK? When you sell a business, you, as the owner, go in front of the buyers and you sell that business. But Mr Fasin, he's not even here. So um, I'm going to declare myself out. More disappointment for Melissa as a second and a third dragon decline the chance to invest. Does Peter Jones find the notion of a tie-in with the absentee Willy Wonka any more appealing? I like the idea of, of 3D printing. I like this moving forward. But whatever deal can be done, it's impossible to get away from the very issue that control will always exist with the very person that is actually branding on the back of your product. I'm now going to be an investor in a subsidiary of a conglomerate. That's not what I want. Right. I'm sorry to hear that, but yeah. honestly, this is really not the way that it is in real life. No, it is. It is in real life. So for that reason, sadly, it's not for me and I'm out. Four dragons have walked away from the deal. Only supplement supremo Tej Lalvani now remains. Will his expertise in this particular market allow him to identify an opportunity that the others have missed? I need to ask you one question. Yes? Would you go into business with someone you haven't met? Without Mr. Fasin, we would have never brought the, got these two products to market. I know that he is very excited about the opportunity to work with someone, specifically you, that is very experienced in vitamins. This is just not how I do business. Yeah. If he owns 90% of the business, and I'm going to be coming in as a partner, I need to know who he is and what he is and what he does and what his plans are. It's absolutely senseless, I mean, to come in with it with a proposal like this. I'm really, really annoyed about it. At the end of the day, I'm not in the den to be investing in subsidiaries of corporates. I'm investing in people. And you don't control the company. So I'm going to say this is not for me. I'm out. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Melissa must leave the den with nothing. Her deal with the German candy giants may have enabled her to turn her 3D vision into reality, but it also scuppered her chances of snaring a dragon. That certainly wasn't the sweetest deal we've had in the den, that's for sure. No. I feel disappointed um, that the main focus of the discussion was around the ownership of the business and not around the incredible innovations that we've developed. The products are what we are most proud of and um, I was really glad to see that they liked them uh, in the initial instance.